idea of proportionality is very, very important. And you're going to find there are certain intersections that must take place when you draw it on your own in a legal size paper reflecting the same colors that I've given you in the handout. So let me start to draw this. And I'm going to draw it in the same way that you should, in the same order. I'm going to give you information that are not found in any books, but should prove helpful if you remember. P, comma, C simply means that I'm going to introduce two variables on there, of which are price and cost. This is the upper right-hand quadrant, the Cartesian coordinate plane, and that's the intersection known as the origin. The very first curve you need to draw is called the average total cost curve. And it must have this shape. The reason it must have that shape is because, speaking relatively, at low numbers of output, we find that the costs are relatively high. As we increase the number of output, we finally reach some minimum point. And this is an ideal number from the point of view of cost even though it may not be an ideal number in terms of the firm's idea of what they'd like to produce. You need to know that average total cost is a sum of wages, rent, interest, plus normal profit. And this last term I underlined three times to give it the kind of emphasis you should too. Normal profit has nothing to do with accounting profit. Accounting profit simply says, this is my revenue, I'm going to subtract expenses, and what's left over is my profit. Normal profit is a philosophical concept, and it's applied exactly this way. People out there who own businesses want to make a certain amount of money. If they don't get that amount of money, they quit. So therefore, the residual, which we call accounting profit, may or not be uh, equal to our minimum expectation, which we call normal profit or normal return. Now, the next graph I'm going to draw, and you guys are, that are copying this need to really emphasize this. I'm going to make this look easy, but nine times out of ten, you can't do it. So practice it at home. This is a minimum point here. I want you to put a minimum point on the average variable cost function far to the left of this point here. I'll do that right there. Now, again, I'm going to make it look easy, but it's not. I'm going to draw the average variable cost function this way so that it is asymptotic to the average total cost function, meaning simply that from this point to the right, it gets closer and closer to the average total cost function. I'm going to make this a minimum. How I'm going to do that is because I'm going to come up here, and I came up here, and therefore, I've defined the minimum. The reason that's important is because we know the next function called the marginal cost function, which is the change in the cost per unit, must intersect geometrically these two functions at their minimum point. And you'll need to study the graph and study the, the example problems in the textbook to get the idea. I could tell you why it is. I could draw the, the mathematical proof, but you wouldn't understand. You just spend time and energy going through this to find out why <clears throat> this intersects. Now, scribes, write down for me to maybe lecture next time using my basketball player height example so that you'll finally get why marginal cost must intersect these two functions at their minimum. That being said then, marginal cost goes through this and has that general shape. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to impose upon these various cost functions, the, the uh, average fixed cost function. But first, I'm going to do the algebra that supports that notion. We know that total cost is composed of fixed cost plus variable cost. If that's the case, then I can take the average of both sides and get average fixed cost plus average variable cost. But that's not what I want. I want to isolate on the fixed cost so I can drive that geometrically on my picture to the left. And so we can do that through algebraic manipulation. You see, average fixed cost then is the difference between average total cost and average variable cost. And this is 
what I'm trying to drive, what I'm trying to draw. Now on Wednesday, bring your ruler, bring your French curve, and a legal sized piece of paper, and I'll bring some of you know, if you have some, and let's drive that now. I can do this any place here, and you can do the same thing too, but I like to pick areas that have a certain logic to them. I've already got a line here. I'll just make another one here, but I can do any place. There appears to be a line here already, so I'll just use that too. Following the stipulation of the difference between these two curves, derive every place cost. I'll do that now, since I've done this a lot of times. I'll just use this rather than a ruler. And so I'm the difference from here, this height minus this height is this difference. So there's a one, two, and a half. One, two, and a half is right here. And then this one is going to be one and, and a half. So one and a half is right here. And this one is 90% and that's 90% there. Now, you can use a French curve to do this, but I don't need to because I have some experience in doing this. I'm going to draw the average fixed cost function through these x's, which reflect the asymptotic character of the difference between these two functions. We'll call that average fixed cost. Now, when you get graded, when you come see me, I'll bring a ruler out and I'll measure these differences. Here to here must match that. From here to here must match this. And from here to here must match this height also. And if you've done that correctly, in those three areas, you get full credit. Now, we have nothing but cost up here, and a business does not operate just with so I'm going to superimpose upon this function a revenue function reflecting the assumption of product homogeneity, price taker, exit entry, and the other assumptions we talked about. That's not a very horizontal line, I apologize for that. But we know then that the price is constant, same thing as average revenue, same thing as demand, same thing as marginal revenue. And this little guy here is pretty important. We know that we must sell at a location that is, uh, that is maximize our profit. And so we know that's where MR underlying price is equal to one C. And that is called GRI, the golden rule of output determination, which is the same thing as saying that marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. If you don't get this location correct, you get a zero for the graph. Everything depends upon that, because that allows me to calculate Qmax, which I'm going to say as a number, say as a number is 100 units, just to make my other calculations easier. Forever, I hope you got that on tape. <laughs> uh, so this is pretty important. There, there is. And so the height of this, average fixed cost, one or two, whatever you want to denote, means the same height as the height right here, average fixed cost, one or two. Along the same equilibrium value, which is Qmax, I find that my average variable cost goes from here to here. And you denote that as a variable cost. In order to look at my average total cost, I go from Qmax up to my average total cost curve with the intersection right here. And so that's my average total cost. And of course, we've already shown at 850, what is my average revenue, which is here 850, and this is my average revenue. Um, now this next part gets really, really tricky. This is your minimum because of the geometry of marginal cost in its relationship to the average total cost. So the minimum here is 704, but this location is slightly higher, so you can draw an arrow and come out past here, and that's 713, as I recall. At the 
point of intersection right here, my average variable cost is what, 449. And then we find out that the minimum point though in this curve right here, I think it's 3.4. And then we talk about a shutdown point. What's four bucks? That's $4. That's four dollars. Now I know that because the shutdown point, any point below here, but we'll use 324. We denote that as shutdown point, which means you didn't cover your variable cost. Then we need to go through and calculate what the totals are. Well, the total cost is equal to average total cost times the equilibrium number, which is 100. The average variable cost is the, is, I'm sorry, the total variable cost is equal to average variable cost times 100. The um, uh, total um, fixed cost is equal to the average fixed cost times 100. And then we can take a look at that. And you should also do, you should get the total economic profit. What's the difference between 850 and 713? And that is $1.37. So then we can calculate these. I don't want to put more on that graph now because it's without colors, it's a little bit difficult. But the average total cost is 713 times 100, about $713. Our average variable cost is 449 times 100, so therefore that's $449. Our average fixed cost is the difference um, is between Sentinel form 449, um, 264, 264. So that's therefore 250 is $264. And the total economic profit is the dollar thirty-seven times a hundred. That's so that's a average economic profit times a hundred. And that's equal to twelve hundred and thirty-seven dollars. There it is, twelve minutes.